It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Dalton's got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. about how he had no ambition. Oh, you're nobody next to Jesse James, she'd say. Finally, the bastard took his brothers to Copperville just to shut her up. But it's always the woman's fault. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Their first mistake was pulling a job in their own damn hometown. The boys grew up in Coffeyville, so everybody knew it. The bank teller tricked them, telling them the time lock on the safe wouldn't open till 9.30. Well, that gave the locals enough time to prepare an ambush for those sons of bitches. Others paid dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the Daltons for months. Now they finally had them dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. This man had no intention of letting the dolphin slip away. He met an adversary that day who had no fear and offered them no fear. The marshals tried to get the dolphins to surrender. They'll give up eventually. You just gotta wait for something. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. Then 
Eddie figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. From above. Fortunately, a water towel was right there. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. Brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. Greaves, and when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. It was early evening, not high noon. Kill that big wave. The Daltons blew up a safe, and were all set to hightail it out of there. I was late to the party, and Coffeeville was already up in arms. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies. I had been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something reckless. In for the kill. And finally, they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends in coffee for them. <laughs> Oh, now what? <laughs> 
running with the money and didn't want to lose them. Problem was, they knew the town better than I did. And to top it all, I found myself in the middle of another shootout entirely. Did the Dolphins pull up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths out there. They were cousins of the Dolphins. And they were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Dolphins. Which wasn't any surprise, because those two families have been feuding forever. <laughs> And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smiths, pissing off the Ham Harbors, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Well, bullets were flying every which way as all the old feuds in Kansas caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in coffee bowls. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. knew I would never give up. Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. They set a trap to slow me down and allow at least two of them to escape. The third brother stayed behind to plant me, just in case that trap of theirs didn't work. his brothers. I understood how he felt. Taking me on all by his own wasn't exactly a recipe for a long life. I'm gonna plant you where you stand. I'm gonna cut you in half. But Emmett Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? But I have to admit, that boy had grit. It took me a couple of days to track the Daltons down. They can't! 
can't get away with this. And in that time, a whole posse of local vigilantes offered to lend a hand. We'll track him to the ends of the earth. They seemed as determined as me to find those outlaws. But as we headed into those swamps, it was like I had my own private army. There was no way those boys were getting away this time. It was early fall, right? Beautiful time of year. At least you had the weather on your side. Not by my recollection. It was damp and foggy as hell. It was tough to stay on a true course, so we kept an eye out for landmarks. trees were in full color, red as blood. The rains that year were torrential, so the whole area was flooded. The vigilantes had spread out wide, and pretty soon I couldn't see anybody. So did you find the Daltons? Not yet, but I did have the questionable pleasure of meeting a few of their friends. had established quite a reputation by that time, so they attracted all manner of riffraff to their cause.
Hopkins was nowhere to be seen. Point B and I was under serious attack. I scrambled up top to get a better view. But <coughs> just ended up falling inside. So, how did you get out? The barn doors was open. About right then, I saw some suspicious characters running through the bushes. Of course, I followed them. But that goddamn swamp was like a goddamn maze, and pretty soon I had no goddamn idea where I was. See? So I just started walking, and pretty soon I... Steve! Steve! Uh, huh? Oh, uh, no, 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 I'm listening. Indians surrounded me from all sides. Oh. Indians? They were Indians? No. I just wanted to make sure Steve was paying attention. Now, where was I? You were following the Daltons through a swamp? That's right. See, Steve? Dwight's paying attention. No, I, I'm listening. I, I, I was just uh, resting my eyes. So, where was I? The Daltons. Right. See, there's a reason so many outlaw gangs are made up of brothers. Being a brother is a very sacred thing. It's a bond like no other. Stop that, something! So did you ever find the damn Daltons? Not yet, but I did find a few of their cousins. In Kansas breed like rabbits. More Smiths or Heimhoffers or who knows what. But hell, what's more important than family? I bet Ben knows what I'm talking about.
strong boys are out there somewhere, standing together against anyone who would threaten them. That's when I saw it. A goddamn steamboat. A steamboat? In a swamp? Yeah, Steve, but this wasn't much more than a wreck, really. But how'd a damn steamboat end up in the swamps? Yes, it floated off during the flood of 89. Now, was it a stern wheeler or, or a side wheeler? What, what? Does that really make a difference, Steve? It was a steamboat with a goddamn army on board. It was in that a fusillade of bullets come raining oh, down from on high. And those good landings who accompanied me weren't anywhere to be found. <laughs> but among those men that were shooting at me, I thought I saw some familiar faces. then, much to my relief, the vigilantes finally arrived. Their leader motioned at a cabin in the middle of the top deck, pointing me directly at the Daltons. I finally had them, after months of dogged pursuit. Huh? But it turned out
turned out that they had me. Take him out! I'm sending you to hell! The Daltons had played Not me so like a fish. Apparently, the vigilantes were on their damn payroll. They didn't just want to shoot me. They wanted to burn me alive. But finding my way out of a burning labyrinth proved to be quite a challenge. It was a riverboat, right? I mean, it's not like it was a goddamn ocean. Well, yeah, but I was in a fight. Um, we're well, talking about the Titanic. You ask me, it's too blessed to so anyway... Don't be stupid, Steve. They know what they're doing. They say that the Titanic is unsafe. Oh, God. But getting back to that steamboat, how'd you get off it, Mr. Breeze? I took in a lot of smoke that day, so I admit my recollection might be a bit hasty. But somehow I managed to finally disembark. It was time to settle this once and for all. determined to take me down, confident that this time the odds were on their side. got it wrong. A sad end for those two. If they'd only known that Emmett was still alive despite his wounds. Paroled 14 years later, he moved to California and sold real estate and lived off the legend of that fateful day. And the tragic death of his two brothers. My own brothers died tragically as well, truth be told.
It was 1868, and me and my older brothers were pulling a tidy profit running cattle into Juarez, Mexico. One night after my brothers retired for the evening, I found a little poker game in a cantina with a couple of cowboys. And I just couldn't lose. I even won an old Spanish coin that had to be a hundred years old. Well, I was mighty pleased with myself the next morning as my brothers and I rode for Texas. But before we crossed the border, those cowboys caught up with us. It was Johnny Ringo, Roscoe Bob Bryant, and another asshole named Jim. They wanted their money back and everything else we had, including our lives, as those boys didn't want us coming for them later. Bob put that old Spanish coin in my mouth and said, I won't have it said that I left you with nothing, boy. Well, those horses bolted, and there we hung as those bastards rode away. The branch finally snapped under the weight of the three of us, but me and my older brothers were bigger and heavier. They were already dead. And right then, I swore to myself that I would avenge them. Ringo, you know about. But Bob eluded me until I heard he was riding with the Wild Bunch. <laughs>